Mm. Boy, is it cold outside, but I am staying warm and cozy here in the cottage because we are going to whip up with your help a batch of kale and sweet potato soup with coconut milk. And then we're gonna set the table with a gorgeous hyacinth arrangement with some fresh cut greens from the garden. Set the table to make it really warm and nice and inviting. Well, let's just call it cottage Huga on a very, very cold weekend. I think you might want to join us. my gosh, it is so cold outside. It is getting ready to get colder and I bet it's cold where you are because there is an Arctic front that is literally sweeping, well, the entire country. So that's my question of the day. I wanna know what the weather is like where you are. Now we don't have any snow yet, but the temperatures are going to plummet down to zero degrees. I wish we had some snow for insulation. I know a lot of you do. So let's all just engage in a little uh, schadenfreude. <laughs> Maybe it's worse where you are, and so it won't make me feel so bad about where I am here in Oklahoma where it is frigid. Okay, but on to another much more pleasant topic. That is how to stay really cozy and eat something delicious and savory when it is that cold outside. So enter, um, enter my rescuer, and that was my friend Jen at Bricks. She gifted me with a ton of her garden-grown kale. It's absolutely gorgeous. Last time she gave this to me, I ate two full platters by myself of kale chips. And this time I thought I needed to probably try a different recipe. Um, so she gifted me a bunch of kale in addition to some eggs. Thank you, Jen. I have a gift for you for being so kind. But I was thinking about what kind of delicious, really warm and comforting soups I could make with this. And I, I Googled it and I came up with a couple of dis different recipes, but I decided on one that was a kale and sweet potato soup with coconut milk. And I actually had all of the things without even having to go to the grocery store, which includes two tablespoons of a good quality olive oil or whatever you happen to have in your cabinet, um, two cloves of minced garlic, one yellow onion diced, a pound of sweet potato. I actually used a little bit less than that because I didn't want the sweet potato to overwhelm, overwhelm the soup. So I just did two small peeled and diced sweet potatoes. I have that here in this bowl. Then obviously it's all about the spices. So there's a tablespoon of turmeric, a tablespoon of curry powder, and yes, I am about out of it three quarters of a tablespoon of coriander, a tablespoon of salt, and if you like, you could also add some other ingredients. I think maybe some cumin that might make it even, give it that much more warmth. That's pretty much up to you. And then I've got four cups of cleaned kale. And to do that, I have just washed it this morning really, really well to get any kind of residue off of it. And then I am just stripping the spine. I love that sound. Can you hear that, Stuart? Mm -hmm. I love that sound, which I did earlier. I've got my trash bowl here that will go into the composter. And then my four cups, I just chopped them up, did kind of a chiffonade on them, a fancy word for just cutting them into strips. <laughs> so I've got all of this stuff ready to go. And then I also needed a can of coconut milk. And here's a tip, you guys. I actually had a couple cans in my pantry but as you can hear, or as you can not hear, at room temperature, coconut milk will often go solid. So I've got another can that I put in very, very hot water. 
and you can hear that it liquefied. So I'll just be able to pour that in. So I've got all of my ingredients here prepped, um, ready to go. So let's get started. The other thing that I needed was a can of chickpeas. Now I didn't have a can of chickpeas, but I did have some dried. I soaked them overnight and now I've got them cooking. And I think by about the time it is ready for me to put them in, they should be finished. So now I've got a big Dutch oven. I, I'm sure you have one as well. And I am just going to turn this on. I am going to add my two tablespoons of olive oil. And I can let that heat up, but I don't know that it really makes that much difference. If you guys are much more uh, sophisticated of cooks than I, let me know if it really makes a difference because I'm then going to immediately put in the onions. That sounds like a question of the day. That sounds like another question of the day. I, I get impatient. There's probably a reason to let it heat up, but it's a reason that I don't only always observe because this is going to heat up pretty quickly anyway. And then I am just going to cook this until it's pretty much translucent. You can hear that it's already starting to heat up. And then I'll put in the garlic, but I'm gonna put in the garlic after the onions because I don't want the garlic to burn. Now, if you are somebody that really likes your alliums, you could probably put in even more onion than this, but I think for now, this is gonna be sufficient for me. Oh my goodness, I want to make sure to give you guys a heads up that we are going to do a Linda Vodder live on Sunday, January 21st at 2 o'clock Central Standard Time to celebrate our 1000th video. We will have crossed that threshold this week and the team here, we decided we needed to celebrate and obviously we want to celebrate with you. So save up your comments, save up your questions and make sure to participate because we're going to give some great giveaways, some high C boots, some Manicora honey, some cool job gloves, um, anything else. I think we're just going to be giving, giving out stuff right and left. So please make sure that you tune in. It's going to be a lot of fun and it just wouldn't be the same celebrating without you. Okay, this is really smelling incredible. This is going to take about two minutes till it's translucent. Now I'm going to add the garlic. I used one of my little garlic peelers that I love so much. And I'm just going to keep moving this because I really don't want it to burn. Because you guys know if you cook at all that garlic can burn pretty quickly and when it burns it goes bitter. Okay. So that is about two minutes. I just want these translucent. Now I'm going to add my diced sweet potato chunks and actually before that though I don't know at this point it makes any difference I'm going to add all of my aromatics and I love the fact that this has turmeric in it because not only ooh, can you smell that ooh, wow that it's that curry <laughs> yum 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 so now not only am I going to be taking my turmeric supplements, as I discussed in my newsletter, but I'm also going to be using it in my cooking because it is such a terrific anti-inflammatory. And this smells divine, darling. Just divine. I'm just going to keep moving this. Colorful, too. Yeah, colorful. And isn't it pretty? I love the golden color of that turmeric. Now, the recipe actually calls for two cans of vegetable broth, but I didn't have any. And so I'm going to use what I have on hand. And I've got 32 ounces. Actually, that is four cups. Four cups of chicken broth. 
follow the recipe. Don't follow what I say. You guys know I am just a pretend cook. Okay, so now I am going to add that chicken broth. And that is so satisfying a sound. Leah was asking me, she said, she was asking me, well, when do you put the kale in? And I said, well, you put the kale in at the very end. And she said, is that a secret of adulthood? And I said, well, I don't know, but it's a secret of people who use kale in anything because it doesn't take much time at all for it to wilt down. And I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. And definitely, you, after you make this, before you make it, at some point in time in making it, either send someone, in my case, Hubs, to the store to get some really great crusty French bread, or today I think I've, I've got, I'm just trying to empty out my pantry so I can restock it, and I've got a couple of boxes of just Jiffy cornbread mix, which I think should be a staple in everyone's cabinet. And... I'm going to just whip up, I think, a little bit of cornbread to go this, okay, We're to, to go with this. So let's let it come to a boil and take a break here. So now, like I say, the recipe actually calls for a can of chickpeas, but I just decided to cook up a batch. Now, if these were canned, you would want to rinse them to rinse out any of the additional sodium. I'm going to just go ahead and rinse these a little bit just in case and this is more than a 15 and a half ounce cans worth but I can kind of eyeball that I think I told you I want to go a little bit light on the sweet potato but I'm going to go a little bit heavy on the chickpeas <coughs> so now over here I am bringing the broth with all of these other goodies in it I'm bringing these up until it goes to a simmer and then I'm going to cover it now this is where I'm going to diverge a little bit from the recipe because my chickpeas are still a little bit al dente rather than um, just completely soft like they would be in a can so I'm going to allow them to cook down a little bit more while the sweet potatoes are also cooking down all right, so you got to tell me what al dente means. Al, oh, al dente to the tooth. It's usually used for pasta, but it gives just a little bit of, uh, literally it means resistance to the tooth. Thank you. You knew that, didn't you? <laughs> I know all of you guys out there know what that means. There's a few of us. Yep, yep. <laughs> so let's just wait till this comes to a simmer. Okay, it's come to a simmer. Isn't it pretty? And I'm gonna go ahead and put in my chickpeas now. And now I am going to cover this. Stuart's getting hungry, I can tell. It smells so good. And it's so healthy. And I think I need to check the nutrition information on this, but I think it only has like 380 calories. Now, I would promise to bring Jen some of this soup, but I'm not even sure Bricks is going to be open over the next few days because it's going to be so cold. And I'm also not sure that there'll be any left <laughs> after Stuart has some and Hubs gets to it. So now I'm going to cover this and I'm going to let it cook for, oh, anywhere from probably eight to 10 minutes until the sweet potatoes get a little bit softer and the chickpeas also get a little bit softer. Not mushy, but soft. Well, as soon as the holidays are over, I start checking at all of my regular locations, Trader Joe's, my garden centers, wherever my florists, to see if they have forced hyacinth bulbs in their inventory yet. Now, I used to do this myself, and then I just realized that it was just as easy to buy some already forced. I enjoyed it before, but now I just kind of want immediate gratification, and they're so inexpensive, there really wasn't a reason not to do so. So these 
these are a beautiful kind of a Delft blue. I believe this might be Peter Stuyvesant Hyacinth. That's one of my oh, wow. favorite, favorite hues in the, um, in the realm of hyacinth colors. I took what is probably, I don't know, was that a six inch pot maybe? And I just dropped it into this faux bois container. I covered it with some floral moss and I think it looks really, really beautiful, especially in contrast to the kind of buttery, oh, kind of burnished gold or creamy color of the dried heads of the oak leaf hydrangeas. Now, I also bought some singularly. So this was a pot that had three of them. And I also bought a couple of singular pots. This one has one bulb in it that's got two blooms on it. I also put this in a faux bois pot topped it with some of this beautiful florist's moss, and that was so easy. I really didn't have to do anything other than plop and place. I've got one more in another area of the parlor, and I'll show you that. Now, I love hyacinths, not only because they really speak to this time of year, but I love them because they put out such an amazing fragrance. I typically always have one by my bedside because at night I can wake up in the middle of the night and I can really capture their scent even from across the room. So here is another instance where I just took a porcelain container and I just plopped one in topped it with moss. It looks really, really sophisticated. It couldn't be easier. And if you know somebody who's kind of got the winter blues or the January blues, I think this would be a great pick-me-up, a really great smile present to make somebody, oh, just a little bit more chipper if they've got the winter blues. But now I want to pot up some more and I need your help. Well, enough about those blue hyacinths. And if I ever say hydrangea, it's because they're similar and I just kind of sometimes interchangeably use them, but mistakenly use them. So I, I have done and potted up lots of blue ones, but now I'm thinking I'm all about the white ones, which by the way, looks look absolutely spectacular if they're outside and they have a dusting of snow on them. It's one of my favorite images I ever took with my iPhone when I first got it. So I, I am debating, do I want to use this wonderful kind of just porcelain cash po? Do I want to use this great uh, copper bucket? copper bale, copper bowl, whatever it is that belonged to my mom with the brass handle, or do I want to use this brass, kind of a window box planter that's got these wonderful feet and it's got a great patina on it. So I'm thinking about it, I am debating, I'm gonna kind of play with them a little bit and see which one I want to use because I really want these to be overflowing with hyacinths. So after this message, we'll be right back and you'll see which one I decided on. So please put in the comments below which vessel you would select. For me, I have decided to go with this beautiful copper one. Now, my instinct was immediately to use this one because I use it so frequently, but because of that, I wanted to use something a little bit different. And also, when I pulled this one out from my storage in the basement, it so reminded me of my mom that I thought, ooh, I think I'm gonna go with this. And I also know what I am going to use to mulch this with will go beautifully with this copper patina. So I could do a couple of different things. I could actually plant these in here. I could plant them into um, another pot and then put that pot in here. And by the way, these come in this floral paper. I kind of wish they didn't because I seldom ever use it and it's kind of wasteful to me. But nevertheless, that's how they were at Trader Joe's. These were, I think, five or six dollars. Um, but what I like about them being plastic is that then they're kind of malleable and I can torture them to fit into place. Now, if I could not torture these to get them to fit into place, then I might actually consider taking them out of their pots and transplanting them, but I am not going to because these I can finagle torture, manipulate, 
Whatever <laughs> word you want to use, I can get them in there. And they also will have room to really fill out in all of their splendor. And I think it'll be really, really incredible once they do. Now, I could top dress this with a couple of different things. And I might use both of them, or I might use none of them. I do have some floral, florist's moss, some cushion moss that I could hydrate and I could top this with, like I did with the other ones. But I could also use some of these beautiful arborvita branches that I clipped. You may notice that in that last video, I clipped some arborvita because I didn't want to be clipping it today because it's so, so cold. But I thought it would look beautiful. And I want this, I want this to kind of be a segue arrangement, a segue between winter and spring, because that's kind of where we are. We're in that liminal season in between. So I'm gonna put some of this and of course, because I'm never completely prepared as I should be, I probably should have some clippers here, but I'm just gonna do kind of a skirt around the perimeter. Kind of fits like a glove. Right? With these, it kind of does, doesn't it? With these arborvita branches, and I kind of want them all to swirl in the same exactly direction. It's doing, yeah. yeah, it's kind of swirling. And I like that because it then kind of also gives it this Oh, almost as if it's a windblown look. Now, these would be beautiful, really, with any white flower. I bought some chrysanthemums the other day, and I stuck some of it into just nothing but an arrangement of white chrysanthemums in a pitcher. But I just like the way this looks because it is quintessentially seasonal. Now you'll notice that even this Arborvita has done a little bit of bronzing. We talked about that in my last video and if you missed it you might want to go back and watch it. Bronzing, particularly of my of my boxwood, perhaps your boxwood, some of your evergreens as well, is just a winter response to stress. Uh, it could also be a response to um, the, the stress of drought or cold or sun scald and for me I find it just to be a habitual thing that happens almost every winter but the bronzing will dissipate in the spring once it warms up I give them a shear and I also fertilize them so while it really disturbs some people it really doesn't disturb me too much and also your boxwood and your evergreens in general are far more likely to bronze if they're in full sun than in some shade. And of course, all of mine are in full sun in the front. So already, I think that looks kind of fun and fluffy. I might come back and lower the height a little bit on some of these branches, some of these Oh, almost like fronds that are coming out. Now, what I'm going to do to fill in the remaining surface so you can't see the plastic pots, I want those camouflaged, is I'm going to take some of this wonderful copper colored mulch, free, free mulch. Now, some of you, uh, so many of you, I sometimes think I must not worry enough about stuff <laughs> because so many of you were concerned that this would have, oh, some, um, maybe some residual motor oil on it or animal urine or um, any kind of, oh, salt chemicals from when we salt it from the snow. Well, number one, this is not a heavily traveled street. Um, so I don't, and it's on the edge of the street, so I don't think that's really much of a problem. Um, the other thing is we haven't even had any snow this year, and even if we did, our neighborhood streets are not salted, so I'm not worried about that. And the other thing is, is I just, I guess anecdotally, I just know from experience that I have done this for years and it's never been a problem. That so the so color cool. just changes the whole dynamic, it's doesn't so it? Cool. And that's why I selected this copper pot because I thought, oh my goodness, the coppery color of these bald cypress fronds. 
-hmm. would just be beautiful. Yeah, would just, just really, really be beautiful and elegant and I think very, very special. And then just wait till these really start to fill out and the fragrance, I think, will be incredible. The fragrance actually might compete a little bit with the beautiful scent of that kale and sweet potato soup. Okay, this has been cooking for a while now. We have tasted the sweet potatoes to see if they are indeed softer. I have donned an apron in case I spill anything. And now I'm going to add the coconut milk, which I think is what will put this recipe kind of over the top. Yeah. I'm also thinking that this would be absolutely brilliant with maybe some cayenne pepper. And I think we'll do a taste test to see if we need to add some cayenne pepper. And also I think it would be really good maybe with a spritz of lime. Don't you think? I can see how that could be just yummy, yummy, yummy. And this is gonna make just the right amount. I'm, I'm slowly learning how to cook for not huge crowds. Um, I think my default is always to cook really large amounts because growing up there were 10 of us. And even when I, uh, my boys were at home and I would, I would cook for the four of us, I would still cook too much. But now I'm, I'm learning to be a little bit more modest, partly because I want my ingredients to stay, really to stay fresh, and I buy them in small quantities over time. So now I've got about four cups of kale. And if I hadn't already added the chickpeas, I would add them now. But this kale, I mean, look at how beautiful that is. It is just like I'm on Food Network or something, Stuart, but truly, is that not just beautiful? The colors of that turmeric and the kale. Again, thank you, Jen. And this is going to wilt down in here. And I, I kind of like these kinds of soups on the thick side, but if it cooks down a little bit too much, as this wilts, I might decide to add a little bit more broth or even a little bit of water. But this soup comes together so quickly. Some uh, Another recipe that I looked at, it called for an Asian curry paste and also some red pepper, but I didn't have any of that curry paste and I did have these, so this is the one that I opted for to create. So I'm gonna let this cook for a little bit and then before you know it, Stuart, it'll be time to plate it up. And I did decide after tasting it that I wanna add a little cayenne and I'll have more of this for hubs because he really likes things spicy. So I'll have some by his bowl. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my goodness, I think this looks pretty incredible. And I tasted it and I did add some cayenne pepper. And now I am just going to, as they say on TV, I am going to plate some of this up. Fortunately. I like your intentional dribble on the side. Yes. Oh yes, intentional. Uh, my messes are always <laughs> in, my messes are always intentional and choreographed, you guys. And I did find a loaf of sourdough a baguette. You really did. I really did. I just pulled that out of there. I didn't even have to make the cornbread. Didn't even have to make the cornbread. I'm going to come over here and get my towel because this is a pretend show. It's not a real show. Or actually, that makes it more real, yeah, isn't it? Go. It makes it's it more, more real. real. Is the this is more real. Okay. <laughs> and Hubs is going to be so impressed that not only 
And look at, look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? That not only did I actually cooked, did I actually cook, <laughs> cook, cooked, did I actually cook? You can edit that part out, Stuart. <laughs> did I actually cook, but I even set the table. I have a centerpiece. I have some crusty bread, and now I've just got one more bowl to fill. So I think it all looks rather charming. I think it looks eminently cozy, very appropriate for a cold, cold weekend. This is the kind of soup that I think only gets better over time. It's, I added some more pillows. You guys may have noticed I added some more pillows to the banquette. I wanted a little bit more uh, I don't know, a little bit more of an ethnic vibe and I wanted to pick up some more on the beautiful clay tones in this painting of Monument Valley and also add a few more blusters of blue, if you will. I got, I know you will ask, I got the uh, placemat and the napkins from Mockingbird Manor earlier in the year. These galvanized, uh, galvanized napkin rings I've had for forever and forever. And by the way, Stuart, you may not know this, the history of napkin rings. They, they originally were invented because they would be more singular and they would be something that was rather individual so that when you use your cloth napkin from one meal to the next, you could readily identify whose napkin was who belonged to who, and also if there were any kind of dribbles on your napkin by scrunching it up like that and putting it in the napkin ring, it would hide <laughs> those uh, those blemishes, blemishes, those culinary blemishes. So there you go. I, I think it turned out really, really nicely. The bowls were thrifted. They're William Sonoma, but they were thrifted a long time ago, but I like them because they're so big and they are wonderful for big salads. And by the way, this little bowl was also thrifted, and indeed, I thought we probably needed a little squirt of lime. So I wish you guys were here and you could enjoy a really yummy bowl of kale and sweet potato, potato with coconut milk savory soup. Did I get that right? Did I get it all out? All the links are below. The recipe will also be linked below. We will put the recipe in community tab. And as always, you can probably find some of these things on Instagram too. So there you go, guys. A wonderful, cozy meal at the cottage. Well, thank you guys for all of your kind words and well wishes um, that I get back to feeling better. You can tell I still am a little bit congested. Like so many of you, I got sick right after the holidays, got a terrible, terrible cold. And I also just felt like I had more aches and pains than I normally do. My arthritis in my wrist was starting to, or in my thumb joint was starting to flare up a little bit. And so I asked my doctor and I also asked my sister Meg who uh, has a PhD in nursing education and has been a, a clinical practitioner for many, many years in, in OB. And I asked them about some supplements that I could take to help, I guess, shore up my immune system and also help me with just overall inflammation. And so they made some very, very specific recommendations and I wanted to share them with you. And I seldom need a cheat sheet when I talk here on camera, but I am going to use one today because I want to make sure that I don't misspeak about the benefits of these supplements. So the first one is one that actually I have taken historically in the past and I just ran out of it and I think probably because it was on a, on a subscription basis when I moved that subscription terminated and then I forgot to start taking it again and I think it's one of the reasons that some of my aches and pains came back. So the first one is krill oil, or it is an omega-3 fish oil. This one is Antarctic, and I did check out um, the recommendations and also ran these by my doctor to see if they were good quality, and indeed this one is, and it is mega red krill oil. <clears throat> 
And here's the part I'm going to read. It shows that omega-3s in krill oil help prevent heart attacks and strokes. It also shows that it helps lower blood pressure, triglyceride levels, which are both risk factors for heart disease. And it also sometimes shows that there's a link between omega-3 consumption and reduced levels of anxiety. Now, what I really noticed was just, maybe it was in my head, but just it's lubrication benefits from taking Taking fish oil, it just really helped me and helped my joints a little bit more. So I have renewed taking that again. And this is Antarctic krill oil. This is 2,000 uh, mega, uh, milligrams per dose. Sorry, I don't have this. I have my glasses on. And I don't, I'm, I'm not sponsoring. These aren't sponsored. Um, they are not sponsoring this post or anything. These, this is just one that I researched and it works and I will put the link below. Now the other one uh, that is so popular now and that is turmeric and that there is so much research. There is so, so many things. Every other article I read seems to be about it. Um, curcumin phytosome and in general, I do not have it yet because I haven't been back to my doctor, but she always recommends all of the Thorn brands and I can buy them at her doctor's office. But in the meantime, here are two other brands, Nature Wise and now and these are both uh herbal supplements that contain 95 percent curcuminoids and it is intended to provide relief from minor aches and muscle soreness um, protects muscles against exercise stress and helps reduce delayed onset muscle soreness so if you like me are starting to pick up your exercise game in the new year then you might want to add this to your regimen um, helps protect muscle tissue from the effects of chronological age, i.e. inflammation. And so definitely I wanted to add that to my regimen. Um, I'm also thinking about starting, I used to take it and then I quit because the research seemed to be a little bit ambivalent on it, but that is glucosamine and chondroitin. And I have a question for you. If you take any of these supplements, um, some or all of them, please give me your experience with them. I do have experience with the fish oil and a little bit with the, with the turmeric, but not a lot. We also, I am also starting to use turmeric when I am cooking um, and omega-3 um, food items that have that as, as part of their nutrition profile when I cook. So all of those are really, really good. And then I'm also taking calcium citrate and D3 vitamin three because I am someone who is prone to osteopenia. And I also, also think that it helps a little bit with seasonal affective disorder this type of time of year. So please let me know in the comments below what supplements you take, which brands you highly recommend. These are some brands that have been highly recommended by medical professionals to me. And just in general, if you think that you have really experienced some beneficial results from taking these vitamins. Okay, I also want to give a shout out to one more thing. This isn't necessarily a supplement. It is an ointment or a therapeutic rub. It's the original Unkers therapeutic rub. It's got definitely a menthol scent to it. And a big shout out to Leah's mom, Cookie, who was the one who discovered this and then shared this with me. And let me tell you, I was very, very um, skeptical at first whether or not it would work, primarily because I had used Volterran on an owie that I have. I, I have some tennis elbow going on, I think from lifting a pot that was a, some pots that were a little bit too heavy repetitively. And I have been using it on my elbow. It has worked great. I had a little bit of shoulder pain. I've also been using it on my arthritic joint. It works great. Leah has sung its praises for a very, very long time. Um, and when I was congested with my cold, I also rubbed some on my chest. So I highly recommend this stuff, um, Unker's Therapeutic Rub. 
And here you go. Here is your outfit du jour. My sweater is from Bowdoin. I have had it forever and ever. It's a cashmere blend. I love it. And it's also in our color of the month, light gray. My britches are skinny jeans. They're Banana Republic. Um, I got these not too long ago, but I find they're great to wear when I wear tall boots, uh, my hunter boots and things like that, because they're almost like tights. They're so form fitting. And I like that. Um, my socks, my socks were a gift for Christmas from my kiddos. Um, my blouse, I'm not sure what my blouse is. All I know it was thrifted. I've had it for years. My necklace, my necklace was gifted to me. Well, I should say the pearls were gifted to me by Hubs. Uh, gosh, probably 35 years ago when we first started dating, he gave me a, a pearl necklace. It was a little too big. So I used some of those pearls to make, I think this is Leah, is this called a tennis necklace? It used to be called, I think, a tennis necklace. Um, my earrings belonged to my second mom. And I think of her whenever I wear them. Um, what else? My belt, I can't remember. I think maybe I got it online. But there you go. There is my color of the month inspired outfit du jour.